Well, hello all. Uh, it's been a couple weeks since I've done a video, and with everything that's been going on and a few other things that I want to talk about today, um, I thought, well, let's put out a video. So, CERN has started up, and we're now seeing uh, a lot of changes in the weather. We're seeing people that are putting out videos on changes in atmospheric colors. Uh, where I'm at right now, here in, uh, in Northwest Arkansas, we haven't seen rain in about a month and a half. I mean, not a drop. Uh, we were supposed to have thunderstorms coming in. Didn't come. Uh, yet, in the St. Louis area, which is uh, kind of to the east, northeast area from us, they got drenched with torrential rain, and it's, it's been amazing what they've been going through, you know. Yet in our area, everything is dying, you know. Uh, and I will tell you right now, uh, the temperatures that we've been experiencing for the past month are abnormally high. I mean, normally about late July, early August, you start see, seeing 100, you know, 100, 105 for a week or two, and then it starts dropping and it's back into the high 90s. Well, we've been in 103, 104, 105 for the whole month of July, and let me tell you what, the RV campground that I live at, I'm, I do maintenance for these people, and I've been doing all the work on the outside. Let me tell you what, I've been working out in this stuff, and it is absolutely horrid, you know? Does this have anything to do with what CERN's going on? I don't know, but I do know that, that, that what prophecy says, what's going to be happening, we are experiencing, you know? Uh, so CERN has, has, has been kicking up, and we've been seeing some things happening. And I don't know if you people have been noticing this, um, but I have. Uh, there's every time when CERN kicks up and they, 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 they put the, these photons and protons into, into spin to nearly light speed and crash them together, every time they do this, man... And I'm not joking about this. I'm not the only one. There are many, many, many others. And I'm sure you probably have experienced this yourself, but never actually put the connection together. But I get this, I feel this wave of energy that goes through and my, both my ears just start ringing away. And I know something's happened. There's been a change. Well, it's going on. You know, and I, I'm going to tell you what, man. There's a, a certain channel. Um, well, there's multiple channels on this. But there are certain channels on YouTube that they've been uh, blasting away at those that are, are, are proclaiming this quantum effect, this Mandela effect, you know. And uh, um, Sean, I'm talking to you. I'm not going to name your channel, but... You know who I'm talking to. You know, there are those that are called to witness, and there are those that are called that their sole purpose that they're called to is to proclaim the gospel. And there are those that are watchmen on the wall. Their job is when they see things that prophetically are in the Bible that are being fulfilled, that their job is to proclaim this to everyone. Scripture even speaks about this. And it says, if you're a watchman on the wall, and you see the enemy coming, and you don't warn the people that the enemy is approaching, that their blood is on your hands. But if you see the enemy coming, and you proclaim to those that the enemy's coming. 
and they don't listen, their blood is on their own hands. There are those that are called, they are watchmen on the wall. They see prophecy being fulfilled. And they are calling out. And, and, and right now we're speaking specifically about the Mandela effect, the quantum effect. Um, John and I, Photohelix and I, we, to, we spoke about this. We, we came up at about the same time calling this the quantum effect rather than the, 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 the Mandela effect because when you call it the Mandela effect, it's named after a specific person and a change that happened with him. When we talk about calling it the quantum effect, we're talking about quantum mechanics. We're talking about what CERN's doing, the crashing together of particles. I don't know if, if you understand what particle entanglement is. And particle entanglement says is no matter how far away or how close they are, you have one proton or one particle and you have another particle and they could be right next to another or they could be, let's just say in, in, in the context of, of, of what we're being taught, billions and trillions and trillions of miles away, they are still connected. And what you do to one instantly happens to the other. Okay, that is quantum mechanics, that is particle entanglement. Now here's the thing, when CERN is doing their spin and they're crashing these particles together, when you incinerate this particle, when you completely destroy it, whatever particle this is connected to, this one does the same. If you destroy this one, this one gets destroyed. And whatever particles are connected to, to this particle, exponentially numbered particles, mind you, this is my hair tie, my hair's down. But what you do to this particle, and it's exponentially connected to all these other particles that are all connected to all these other particles. And what you do to this one, you do to this one, and you do to all the ones that are connected to that one, and you do to this one, to all the particles, and then the micro world for which we live in, our macro world, our world is built upon the micro world for which these particles interconnect, inter interact and interconnect. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when you make changes in the micro world with what CERN's doing, you absolutely, positively, without a question, have to change the macro world, the world that we live in. This hair tie, my hair, these trees behind me, the ground, everything is all made up of the particles, and this is all God's world. Yahweh created this, and he created it in such a way, and understand, when they were building the Tower of Babel, okay, everybody's like, oh, they were, they were trying to build this Babel to go up, 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 and and that's what we're taught in the churches. What did Solomon say? There is nothing new under the sun. What has been done before will be done again. What they're doing at CERN is not anything new. And they were, back in the Tower of Babel, they were doing stuff that they were taught by the fallen angels. The angels the watchers that came down to Mount Aramon <coughs> that created the Nephilim. There's an understanding. There's a difference between Nephilim and Nephilim. Nephilim is the fallen angels, the watchers that came down. The Nephilim is their children. What they taught them is what they used to build the Tower of Babel. They were trying to break through into a dimensional realm <coughs> to go to heaven. Now you understand what scripture says. <clears throat> that there are those that come through the door and there are those that will come through over the wall. Now you understand what they're talking about. And it's literally happening again. God stopped it back then and he confused their language. And they all went in their separate ways to spread the human population throughout the world. 
Why? Because it wasn't time. But here we are now and we're seeing, you know, I don't know how many of you people are, are like been awake for a long time and how many have not been awake for a long time, but the blood moons that, that occurred and, and when they occurred and how they occurred on all the feast festivals, um, all the sign, the, the Revelation 12 sign, all of this has actually already happened. You know, and, and it's like, Sean, you can blast on people and saying, hey, if you're not preaching the gospel, you're a, a witch or you're a sorcerer. And Sean, you're wrong. It is your place to call people to Christ. And that's your sole job. And that's cool, man. Brother, I love you for doing that. That is fantastic. But there are those that are watchmen on the wall and they're called to proclaim when these prophecies are coming true to tell the people. When I've done when I was doing my videos, right now I can't because well, for the past few years my computer is I don't have a computer. I have my tablet and I have my phone. So uh, what you get is what you get, you know? But when I was doing videos, at the end of my videos, every single one that I did, I had an altar call where I called people to Christ because you gotta, you, you gotta come to Christ, man. You gotta know Yeshua HaMashiach. You gotta accept him. You gotta repent from your sins. I do not disagree with anything that anyone says. Absolutely, that is positive fact you got to do that man but you still got to tell people what's happening there are people that they won't wake up unless they hear and see they hear what's happening and then they see it and they go one and one equals two oh there are those that, that that's the only way they're going to get reached and there are those that, 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 are, that are born again Christians that love Yeshua HaMashiach. They love Yahweh. Yah, however you want to put it. But they don't see what's actually happening because it's not being taught in the churches that they're going to. And then they come and they hear it from us and they go, wow. Wow. One plus one plus one plus one equals four times two equals eight. And it's all adding up and it's waking them up. You cannot be blasting people and, and telling them that they follow Satan and they're sorcerers and they're witches and they're cultists because they're watchmen on the wall. You need to stop judging them and you need to start loving them and not say like Sean like you do I love you and I care for you and then you spend the next 20 minutes tearing them down and calling them seeds of Satan you can't do that man it's about trusting God and knowing your purpose that God put you to here to do and if someone else has another purpose that is different than you but they're still calling to the same God. They're still calling to the same Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. It's not your... You know, Christ was talking about the apostles came to him and they were talking about this, this person that was casting out demons in his name. And they were like, we were like telling him, you can't do this. And, and, and what did Christ say? He said, do not forbid them. For who is for us is not against us. Time to wake up, man. You know? Dude, I care about you. But what you're doing is wrong. And you need to focus on the mission that God sent you here to do. And that is to spread the gospel. And those that were sent for watchmen on the wall... Let them be watchmen on the wall. Don't tear them down. Man, I'm seeing, 
I'm watching Satan come in and he's, he's putting thoughts in people's heads and there's such a division going on that we're now fighting against one another rather than unifying and proclaiming the gospel of Christ and proclaiming the fulfillment of prophecy and how close we are to the end. Dude, you even said to me, man, on your last comment, you were like, oh, I hope you find Christ. Well, that's been a long time since, and I've made mistakes, and I've fallen down, and I've gotten back up, and I've repented, and here I am back, and I've been back for a long time, but I'm watching you destroy or trying to destroy other people for the mission that God put them on to do. Man, folks, we are in the end of the end of the end days. I mean, we're on the verge of World War III. Actually, I shouldn't say that. I should say we're on the verge of World War III becoming hot because we've been in World War III for about a year and a half, two years now at least, minimum. Now with Pelosi going to Taiwan, here in August, uh, Taiwan, Tai, excuse me, China is talking about they're going to do military activity, uh, strong activity. They haven't mentioned what, but they're talking about if she goes to Taiwan, they're going to respond. We're looking at what's going on in Ukraine, how things are actually actively acting up. So we're watching World War III become active. Where this goes, I don't know. And I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I do. I'm not a prophet. I am a watchman on the wall, but I spent a, a good period of time where I stepped off the wall and I stopped watching. And that was my mistake. Folks, don't spend your time watching CNN and Fox and MSNBC and all these other channels. Sure enough, take a look at what they're saying, but look at other avenues of people that are reporting. YouTube, uh, there's other channels uh, that, that allow <coughs> you to speak what truth is and they won't. And, and YouTube has a problem with this. They won't censor you from it. Um, there's other different channels that, that you can go to that, that people are, are reporting on. And they're going to tell you the truth of what's actually happening. It's up to you, man, you know? Sean, not a single one of us have said Stop reading your Bibles. Every single one of us you're, that you are saying, that we're saying, don't read your Bibles. Every single one of us have been telling you, read your Bibles, but get on channels, whether it be through Facebook or through other avenues of social media, where there are groups of awake people that are seeing the changes. If you, we're telling you, Read your Bibles, but come to us, and if you see something that doesn't make sense to you, post your questions, and if it is a change, you will see people that will tell you that, that it was. And if it's not, trust me, on the channel, on, on the groups that I made back in 2015 on Facebook, there are people, they, they brought forth and they said, wow, this doesn't make sense to me. Is this a change? And there were many, many people that said, no, 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 that's not a change. Because it was someone that didn't read the Old Testament. They weren't invested in spending large times studying scriptures and the New Testament. So to them, it looked like a change because it didn't make sense. But it wasn't a change after all. Let me tell you something right now. For those of you that are saying, and you all know who I'm talking to, 
Oh, that photo helix, photo helix in, the, in the end of his life stopped talking about the changes and he was only con, con, just worried about you knowing Christ. You know what? You're partially right. Yes, that was, he wanted everyone to know Christ. But to the day that he took his last breath, he knew the changes were real and he spoke about them. And let me tell you, I spent days and days and days and months and months and years with that man. I lived in his front yard for two years, almost two years. I know more about what he went through than most of you that even begin. I know because he told me and what Shell told me. The man knew the truth and he knew that the quantum effect was real. But he still wanted you to know Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. He still wanted you to accept him, repent from your sins, and follow him. And no, he didn't take down his channel because he didn't want people hearing what he was saying about the... No, no. You don't know what you're talking about when you said that. Trust me, I do know. I watched the man cry when he took it down and he said, you know, it was in his heart to shut the channel down. And then he was like, man, should I have done that? But he stuck with it. But it wasn't about, oh, I don't want people seeing what I said about the changes. It was about, he knew it was time for him to shut down so that people wouldn't follow him, but they would follow Yeshua HaMashiach. But he still understood the truth to the changes. I, I needed to put that out, man, because there are those out there. Uh, Sean, you're one of them, but there's several others that, that, that you're proclaiming stuff that is not true. Do what Christ called you, what the Holy Spirit put on, upon your heart to do. And it's not about dividing the body to make you look right and others look wrong and to proclaim them to being something that they're not. Man, just do your job. It's like the carpenter telling the machinist that he's doing it wrong when the machinist does a completely different job that the carpenter does. The carpenter has no clue what he's doing because he wasn't called to be a machinist. He was called to be a carpenter. Man, I, I, I just felt I needed to put this video out, man. Um, here in Northwest Arkansas, it is hot as HE double hockey sticks. Um, we haven't had rain in about a month and a half. We were supposed to get some rain, uh, scattered thunderstorms, and we didn't get them. And it's 101 degrees out, you know. Well, I'm gonna close this out, man. I'm just, I'm sweating my brains out, but hey, still had to let my hair down. Hey, I love you all. Peace. Follow Yeshua HaMashiach, accept Him, repent from your sins, and do as the Bible commands us to do. What does Christ say? Christ said, if you had believed in me, you had done as I commanded. And everybody's like, oh, what? well, we look at the New Testament to what He commanded. But understand, Christ is the Word of God, and in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And Scripture says that nothing was created throughout Him, and that includes the law. So to disregard and say, man, I can live how I want to live as long as I believe in Christ, um, Hey, what did Christ say about that? 
There are those that will say, did we not do this in your name? Did we not do that in your name? And he will say, be gone from you, you workers of iniquity, you workers of lawlessness, for I never knew you. You still got to accept Christ, repent from your sins, and follow his teachings to the best of your ability. We're all not going to do it right. Absolutely not. But we do the best that we can, and when we screw up, we repent. Well, we're at 25 minutes and 30 seconds, and I need to shut down. That's long enough. You're all probably tired of hearing me, man. So, peace. I love you all. May God bless you and keep you. And until we meet again, man, peace all.